David is returning to Saba in the field to check on Cherie. She doesn't have a physical injury, and that makes it very difficult, even for the vets, to actually determine what is actually the problem. All I know is it's some really bad internal thing like a stomach um, issue or some virus or some bacteria or some, um, you know, something bad. But keeping track of Cherie and Sokote is becoming increasingly difficult. They've joined a huge herd. A lot of elephants here, my goodness. At this time of year, when the rains come, the elephants all get together to socialize. I haven't even counted them, but it's well over 100. They are heading into rough country, and the weather is closing in again. There's a massive rainstorm coming, and we're trying to get to them quickly. Ooh, thunder. It'll take all David's skill to find them. David, you copy? She's where? At the back. Oh, my God, here's Sherry. Poor Sherry. I've known her for such a long time. The worry is... If she dies, then there's a very high likelihood that her calf will also die, because we probably won't find it. In many ways, we shouldn't interfere. But sometimes with elephants, you just feel like they suffer on such a level of consciousness that one has to act, and especially for that baby. That poor little calf must be absolutely desperate for milk, and she pushes it off every time it comes near. It has absolutely no chance of survival at all in the wild, because its family won't incorporate it. They won't take it in. They don't look after young orphans like that who are unweaned. They just can't. It's too much investment. The only thing we can do, and it's a very difficult decision, is maybe try to rescue the calf. But we can't make that call. That has to be done by the vet and by much higher levels of authority at Kenya Wildlife Service. And in the meantime, we just have to monitor her and whether there's any hope at all. It's a tough one. Thank you.